call the meeting of the commissioner's meeting for for February 15th, 2012 to order. Uh, I'd like to add one item to the agenda and, and that is uh, at the end of our meeting, we only have two reports coming in, but I'd like to have a non-public meeting uh, with the commissioners to talk about the uh, Mountain View union contract. Uh, the process that we use there is one commissioner negotiates with the union. Uh, once they come to some kind of an agreement, the union has to go back and get a vote from their members, and the commissioners have to vote on it. And if everybody agrees, both are positive, then it goes to the delegation. Um, and then if they turn it down, then we go back to negotiating and the whole process starts over again. Or should we not agree um, on the process, then it might go to arbitration, which means somebody comes in and says, uh, this is the way it should be, but we don't have to follow that. Um, uh, so that's the process that we use with negotiations. The jail union contract, uh, we're still negotiating with them. The uh, nursing home, uh, we've come to a tentative agreement. So the commissioners will discuss that particular agreement uh, in non-public. So uh, we have public input right from the start. So anybody that uh, wants to uh, have any positive public input uh, this week, I'd be <coughs> glad to accept it. Yes, Mr. Brown. Who's the attorney, the, the attorney for the negotiations? Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, he, uh, it was Tom. Clausen. Clausen. right. Clausen. Uh, Clausen. Yeah. What firm is he from? Um, he's with Jackson and Lewis, yes. out of Portsmouth. Uh, the person that I was negotiating that we that we had representing us, Tom Flyga, uh, passed away after two or three meetings with the union, and so. We felt it was a good idea to get someone else from that same firm because the notes that he took uh, were important to the negotiations. So, so Clausen is the attorney. Anybody else got any public input? Mr. Albee. I know that uh, <clears throat> historically, or actually even presently, the feeding of meals to the um, staff has not been codified in the contract it's just been something that we've done mm -hmm. and the delegation I guess has weighed in on that issue a little bit is that affecting your negotiations no you expect well you expect what's in there is in there we haven't talked about meals uh, in the union contract okay. and kind of under the radar yet Monday it seemed as though the uh, County attorney's looking for a twelve thousand dollar raise. What's the commissioner's uh, position on that? I, uh, when you say they're looking for a twelve thousand dollar raise, the you mean the county attorney or the, the assistant? County, the county attorney. The county attorney. Right. He presented the raises for his associate attorneys pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I I missed it. I didn't hear it. Did you hear it? Hear it? No. Yeah, yeah. no. I, I know they started talking about it, and it wasn't the place to talk about it. Right. Um, normally, what happens is the commissioners plus the individual elected officials would write to the chairman of the delegation suggesting that they receive a raise and reasons for it, uh, and then the delegation then. Um, uh, approves or disapproves it, and they either do it in May or June, just prior to <coughs> the opening of of uh, announcing who's going to be a candidate, so that whoever's a candidate would know exactly what they're going to be paid for the job. Um, I don't think it was proper uh, for for the county attorney to do that. It's normally done by writing. He's new; probably didn't realize that that. Uh, it's normally not done that way. Well, and he's not new to the county. We've only had a full-time county attorney for the last half dozen years. 
prior to that, I was considered a part-time position. Why? I, I, I appreciate that he's probably figuring out that it's quite a lot of work, but that doesn't generally drive the amount that we pay elected officials. It's mm -hmm. other I issues that push that number. Yeah. I think the other issue that the delegation is concerned with is uniforms, as to who gets a uniform, who doesn't. Uh, I think that that will be an issue when we start talking about budgets, start approving budgets. We've been through, subcommittees have been through it, most subcommittees, not all of them, mm -hmm. um, have been through department heads, and now it's gone through the delegation. Uh, they should start acting on approving some of those budgets uh, the next time they meet, which is, uh, what, in a couple of weeks, right? Right. The next meeting of delegation is on Monday the 12th, March the 12th, the 19th and the 26th. The 26th, too? They, they're holding the 26th because our budget has to be in Concord by the 1st of April. Um, and uh, if they don't finish in the next, in the <coughs> two-week time, the 12th and the 19th, then, then they'll go to the 26th. <coughs> oh, uh, yeah, the other, yes. Uh, did the county ever get title to the, or the, the title papers to the Humvees that were given to the county? I no, I haven't seen them. Yes. Um, regarding the elected official salaries, yeah. You said they were set in June uh, or around then? Cause it, the around budget, May or June, but it's before, before they you. open it up for, for around, uh, what do you call it, applying for the position. That just strikes me as weird because, you know, the budgets are finished in, in March. Yeah. So how do you get the extra money if you give them a raise? Good point. Yeah. And That's if a you question you ask the delegation. And if you Wouldn't put it, it in in June. It starts the following year. Okay. But it is the delegation set That's the right. rate for the elected okay. officials too. So in other words, could Tom put in for a raise that he wouldn't that would actually go to his uh, successor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he didn't get reelected. Yep. If he yes. didn't get reelected. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It would, it would start in January first, two thousand thirteen. So if it starts in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Any other public uh, comments? Okay, um, Jason, please. Well, before Jason, you got any minutes you want to prove? Come on yeah. up, Jason. Come oh, on up. Can you on. wait for a minute? I, by accident, delete my minutes, so I, I want to read them. Okay. I didn't read them. Okay. Got any reports tonight? Yes, I do actually yeah. have a report. Um, Actually, I have two reports today. Yesterday, that was Tuesday, yes. Yesterday, um, I attended a, a meeting for Carroll County United Team 4, which is um, a group that dealing with um, both uh, biomass and business, business uh, work in the community, in Carroll County. Um, they asked whether uh, whether or not we here in Carroll County would be able to provide uh, groups a, um, a, a walkthrough with our new system once it is up and running. That is our pellet boiler system. And I, of course, said, by all means, you know, bring as many people as you like. We would love to show off what we have done. Uh, we also talked about uh, possibly um, allowing the uh, this group to be on our website because they they trying to attract businesses to community to uh, Carroll County and I said that sounds like something we would be able to do they um, they work with United Way mm -hmm. um, after that meeting uh, and having no actual direct uh, affiliation or contact with Carroll County um, I was. I went down to uh, Manchester to the Manchester Veterans uh, um, Clinic uh, to uh, to see a dedication of a new wall that has been put up to honor our veterans 
in New Hampshire who have died in the efforts in the uh, two th after 2001, <coughs> uh, Afghanistan and Iraq wars. And it was a very, very touching um, memorial to these people. I'm sure, although there was no indication on the walls where each of these young men, most, almost all of them young men, uh, came from, that is what communities they came from, mm -hmm. but it is my it's my recollection that there was at least one, uh, jet, one young man who came from, I believe it was Wolfboro, but I, I, can't, I can't be sure of that. So, and I don't remember his name, but I, I, I believe he was on the wall at that time. Uh, the governor was there, uh, Mayor Gats, 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 Gastis, Gatis from uh, Manchester was there speaking. All of the... Um, our, our government, both senators and uh, Congress people, sent uh, letters to be read. But by and large, it was the wall that was quite overwhelming and touching and a, a fitting tribute to these people and their families. All their family, well, many of their families were there, and that was very, very much enlightening. I, I, I would say. If you're down in that area, if you're down in Manchester, go over and take a look. It's well worth the visit. Do you have anything else? No. Do you have Not anything about no. no. Okay. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, questions for you. Um, this morning's report, we had 58 in-house, uh, two weekenders, 12 transfers, three out on electronic monitoring, 13 free trial release, total population of 88. Uh, took in 19 inmates last week, 13 were repeaters, and 17 were released. The repeater charges, one came in for simple assault, booked six times in 14 years, one for criminal mischief, criminal threatening, and simple assault, booked two times in seven years, one for burglary, booked two times in two years, one for breach of bail and a capius, booked nine times in 12 years. One for criminal threatening, times two, booked seven times in 18 years. One for driving under the influence in protective custody, booked two times in two years. One for uh, driving under the influence, breach of bail, times two, and operating after suspension, booked two times in two years. One for acts prohibited in transportation of alcohol, booked two times in two years. One for driving under the influence, acts prohibited in transportation of alcohol, booked seven times in 19 years. One for violation of probation, booked two times in six years. One for issuing bad checks, booked three times in three years. One for an electronic bench warrant, times two, uh, booked three times in three years. One for criminal threatening, booked 19 times in 11 years. Um, at our superintendent's affiliate meeting this past Friday, uh, you may or you may not know um, some of the, the bills that were, um, is that expedient to legislate? Uh, those bills were the study to privatize county corrections, uh, the bill to give the authority to the superintendent. I'm sorry, we have the first one. Privatize county corrections. There was what a. Is, is going to be moving on? Uh, expedient to legislate. Is, I, my understanding has been. Um, Placed on file. Yeah, inexpedient. Uh, oh, inexpedient. 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 I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. These terms I'm not too familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> um, so another one would be um, provide authority to the superintendent to place uh, sentenced offenders out on electronic monitoring without a court order. Uh, which, which way did that go? Inexpedient. Inexpedient to legislate. Yes. All these that I'm going to mention okay. in the same status. Uh, the bill removing the Hampshire Association of Counties as a certifying authority uh, for county corrections officers. Um, and apparently there's a bill being uh, looked at at this point uh, to remove 17-year-old offenders from the adult criminal justice system. Um, I'm under the understanding that that's not moving anywhere, uh, but it's being reviewed. Uh, and then there is a bill that recently passed um, that would allow public officials in their performance of their duties to be audio and video <coughs> recorded anywhere that the public has a reasonable expectation to be. Mm -hmm. um, at our affiliate meeting, um, we also discussed uh, a growing issue with um, 
bath salts. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Uh, apparently, three correction facilities in the state have had some um, pretty serious incidences with these. Um, and uh, Superintendent White was at a uh, meeting in Portland <coughs> where a DEA representative did a presentation. Uh, he's going to schedule that same agent to come over and do a presentation to our affiliate as well. Um, this past Friday at our certification board meeting, we had four officers um, be certified under the New Hampshire Association of Counties, uh, so they're now certified officers. We're going to be running three corrections academies this year, uh, one starting in March, another one starting in May, and the final one in October. Uh, we have seven uncertified officers at this point, and we're going to be scheduling them to attend those academies. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to, to, to present would be, uh, because we've had some issues with uh, people approaching the perimeter and things of that nature, mm -hmm. uh, Cheshire County has had um, these signs made by the New Hampshire State Prison Sign Shop. So I'd like to um, look at possibly doing the same, if I could have you mm -hmm. folks review those and just um, at some future date give me a, a yay or nay. Um, that's one of the things that they did to, um, although they don't have a fenced in perimeter, this is some signage that they used to um, post around their property. Um, then based on the, uh, we have a we the webinar schedule for later today from the NIC. Um, that's going to be starting at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Um, one of the things I, we had a meeting yesterday, and we're looking to establish a criminal justice coordinating committee. Uh, and the first meeting is going to be scheduled for April 17th. Um, so I'd like to see if we can have at least one member from the commissioners to, to sit on as April part of that 14th. morning. Did you hmm? say April 14th? April 17th. Oh, and that meeting would start at uh, 1 o'clock. Um, Regarding the fence, I had a discussion with uh, Kathy downstairs, and that never went out to the uh, RFP. So we're going to work on that this week, and hopefully get that out by the end of this week, so we can we can move on that. And then on Friday, we did a uh, administrative transfer uh, to another county for a, a housing matter. And that's all you I need have. approval on that. I'm sorry, sir. You need approval on that. Uh, on this one because it's a county corrections facility. I don't. You it's, don't. it's within the. Strictly authority. going to the state. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody got any questions? No. Any questions, yeah. Jason? Okay. Um, okay. Anything okay. further? No, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. You brought some support with you this morning? I did. Good. I did. Um, let me just give these to you. This morning we have a census of 102 residents, nine, 19 private pay, 6 Medicare, seven um, pending Medicaid, 70 Medicaid, and we just had one um, resident uh, pass away. Um, Jen has been working diligently getting um, um, applications finalized and what have you, and we're looking for an admission perhaps on Monday. As far as the neighborhood gardens are concerned, I've, I've been in contact with Kim Espinoza, and, and now I've placed a call to Russ Norton, and, mm -hmm. and we'll go from there as far as a date, as far okay. as yeah. looking at our plans. Um, over the last few days, and I want to say this started Thursday or Friday of last week, um, our staffing has on nights has become very fragile. Um, I don't want to talk about medical issues, but we do have three um, um, night staff LNAs on Family Leave Acts and for um, Medical Leave Act and, and certainly justifiably. And then we had one LNA who did not want to work nights because of um, um, outside um, um, activities and therefore um, she will be leaving nights. 
So I did call um, Commissioner Sorensen yesterday and asked for some support as far as not using agency, but hopefully using an incentive for the next month of $5 in addition, additional payment to hope for staff to sign up. In the same time, I'll be meeting with Robin to hopefully post some temporary night positions, not permanent. And we also are hiring for some full-time people, but to get us through the crunch, because we don't know where we'll be. So um, that's where we are as far as that is concerned. Um, pharmacy, I spoke to you um, uh, several times over the past month or so in regard to you know, our pharmacy <coughs> situations. Um, we had been paying uh, $1,545 a year for our consultant pharmacist. Um, and that was, I believe, about $1.25 per bed um, per month. And um, I received uh, a letter from Omnicare of New Hampshire, um, as did other county homes, um, for an increase of rate to $5.50 per licensed bed. Um, per month, which brought that up to six thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars. So it's you know, so we're in the five thousand. I mean, it had increased five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Is there any alternative? No, we looked at others. Essentially, what Omnicare had had done, they had um, they had were allowing for again the disproportionate number of of Medicaid residents we were having. And this was all, all prompted by um, an OIG advisory. Um, so we looked at other opportunities, um, very nice, very good pharmacies. Um, one was more interested in, in upgrading our, um, our services having to do with um, the computer system, which is wonderful, but not in our budget for this year. Mm -hmm. Another um, service, um, great service, is outside of, of New Hampshire, and it really is important that we're able to have some good turnaround um, right now. But um, in talking with um, the uh, executive director of Omnicare, um, he, he's, he realizes that we will continue on looking um, because, again, you know, this is, we want the service, but we also are looking at, mm -hmm. at the bottom line as well. So I have um, the contract. And again, there uh, it's an addendum. This is the OIG report, if anyone is interested in reading that. And, um, so all the nursing homes are getting hit with this. All of the the uh, right with this company. All of the private nursing homes um, had notification a, a, more than a year ago, and this year it was the county homes, all of the county facilities that are are with this company. How many other county? Would you know how many other county facilities are with this company? Quite a number. I would say over half. And then um, last on the agenda, um, our admissions um, process was discussed last week, and I'd like to introduce Jen Chiavacci. Um, she's the coordinator of our admission program, and she also works in the social service department. Good morning. Good morning. Jen. Um, Appreciate the opportunity to be mm -hmm. here to speak about our admissions process. I think in order to understand it, we need to go back. Um, we need to backtrack first. This is my fifth year here working for the county. And when I began my career here, there were beds that were taken out. We were not having 103 beds. Um, yeah. They'd been removed from the census. And the occupancy was between the 80s, late eight, uh, upper 80s, lower 90s, and we were not at 100 in three beds capacity, mm -hmm. which is not the case anymore. At that juncture, when we were trying to fill beds, we were looking outside the community at times to fill those beds because mm -hmm. it was a very difficult process. We're no longer there. We have a very healthy wait list. Um, and I would say that at this juncture, we are giving preference to the residents of Carroll County and the families of Carroll County when we are looking at filling empty beds. Um, we are receiving multiple calls from the community daily, um, and this includes people popping in, asking for tours, um, looking to receive an admissions packet. Um, they're also asking about other services in the community, so that is also a resource that we are offering to them. Um, we have all of New Hampshire 
the acute care facilities where we're receiving referrals on a regular basis. Um, we are also receiving referrals on a regular basis outside of our state. We get them from Maine, we get them from Mass, um, and we are also getting them from Vermont. Again, when we are looking at admissions, we are looking at our Carroll County residents first. Um, I would say that right now, uh, the most difficult thing we're coming across is there is a very high need. I have people asking me how long, and I can't give them an answer. Yeah. Um, our, and with our wait list, the other issue that comes up front is we have people who are putting their names in early who may not be ready to come in. By the time sometimes we're calling on people, um, they may have made other plans. They may be in another facility um, at times they passed on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot that's going on here. But we are very busy with people making inquiries and our wait list is wonderful. Somebody has done an excellent job <coughs> getting us from the low 90 bed fill up to 103 bed fill and, and I guess uh, you deserve a lot of credit mm -hmm. along with uh, Sandy in keeping that uh, uh, all those beds filled, and that means that uh, our budget, um, we're paying, or we, we are um, taking advantage of having those beds filled where we're not losing, uh, what is it, $275 a day. We're getting that in as income now, so both of you deserve a lot of credit. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'd like to ask a question regarding sure. that. Does acuity come into play here at any time? It does. It very I much does. So. We have um, very good relationships with many of the community providers, and there are times when we receive calls mm -hmm. for situations mm -hmm. where there are issues going on for safety and other things, and acuity does play a role. And when I needed to bring my father-in-law to New Hampshire from New York, I, being a resident of of the county would have had ability to get him here. We give preference name. to those who are who are currently elders in the community and the family members of Carroll County. And when someone is in the hospital, and when and they're going to be released, but they need they cannot go home mm -hmm. to be released, will they be coming here? Well, could they come here? They could if there is an opening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do you have any calls for a daily rehab type? Uh, somebody that had a, a knee operation <coughs> or a hip operation calls. that would like to get some uh, exercise or whatever they're doing in physical therapy? We do have Do we calls. have calls on that and can we handle those? Um, we are getting calls of that nature. Are you thinking um, in-house rehab or I'm thinking of a daily type thing that might come in on a daily basis. Okay. I do have those calls. I also have calls from people who are going to have surgeries and looking to come to our facility. I have and both. so are we handling any of those? Can we? Currently, we are only doing the... In-house? In-house. And is that to capacity, um, what we're doing yeah. in physical therapy? We have room to grow as far as delivering rehab services and and mm -hmm. Genesis our our contracted agency has been very good as as our capacity increases they've been able to increase their service or their their resident load mm -hmm. the the the, sti the sticking point right now is for those those residents who are having surgery elsewhere and like to come in as um, a rehab patient, meaning in in house in the facility, yeah. we need to have a bed to put them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you if you're running a census of 103, that that is that is difficult. Yeah. The yeah. short term rehab candidates, there are many out there, but we're not always able to provide what they're needing mm -hmm. because our beds are full. So, I guess my question is: Are we presently taking in any daily type? Rehab? No, no. We're not. no, we have to. We have to go through another certification process for that. We have not done that as yet. Is that something we should do, or we could do, and and perhaps increase our revenue that way? We will. We'll be moving forward with that. Um, over the last few months, we've been very busy to make sure that all of the systems are functioning and we're we're comfortable because we've just moved in um, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're 
where um, where we want to be, and then we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Projection um, sometime this year we'll be exploring it probably. And you, summer. Met, you said something about certification. <coughs> certification uh, does is that C O N certification? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, because I, I just heard this morning that there's some question about whether or not they're going to.